Want to give you the math behind the broken housing market. Let's talk about some updates from Tesla and Apple. Talk about the week ahead. And of course, we can highlight a monster tax bill from the one and only Mark Cuban. Folks, let's get into the news. Let's jump right ahead to the retail sales. Obviously, the death of the consumer has been greatly exaggerated. Once again, we have retail sales coming in above expectations. Uh, the numbers came out this morning. Retail sales came in at 0.7% increase. Always remember, folks, this number is not, not, not adjusted for inflation. So if you want to adjust it for inflation, you could subtract 0.4. Lo and behold, retail sales grew inflation adjusted. What were the expectations? The expectations or forecast by the best and brightest was for an increase of 0.3. Again, if you adjust for inflation, it was expected to go down, negative 0.1. Uh, when you look at the numbers behind the numbers, you can see an increase in gas, which makes sense. We saw gas or energy increase in CP CPI. But actually, the largest contributor to retail sales was online sales. Online sales increased 2.7%. So yes, retail sales was strong. What does this mean to you and I? Well, it means rates are going higher. The 10-year note is ripping this morning. The 10-year note was up 0.12. Folks, the 10-year note typically moves 0, 0.0 something. Uh, the 10-year note up 0.12. You could likely see mortgage rates go to 7.4 today. I think the real question is, will we see 8% mortgage rates this year? Will we see 8% mortgage rates in May? It could be right around the corner. I mean, if you look at the economy from the numbers, it looks stronger than expected. I expect GDP growth to be raised. We also, of course, have the strong job market. We always have the noisy doomers, but hey, when you look at it all together, again, retail sales, consumer, 70% of our economy still spend, spend, spend. This is with record credit card balances, record delinquencies, and the like. So yes, retail sales is up, up more than expected. Let's give you the math behind the broken housing market. This is something I have been looking for. Uh, and I wanted to kind of break it down. Again, we've been calling a broken housing market for several years now. That means transactions, the move up buyer, it's all broken, right? There is a bifurcated market where luxury is stacking up, entry level is still selling quickly. But here's the math. For two decades, for 20 years, the average move up buyer, and what's a move up buyer? It's where you sell your entry home and you get the next one, right? Typically another bedroom, typically a nicer area, typically a newer home. Again, typically. The average payment for a move-up buyer for 20 years was an increase of $400. So, hey, hey, honey, do you want a new home? Yes. What's it worth? It's worth $400 a month. That's the payment that people would sign up for. Now, again, that usually made sense, right? Because you historically you had eight years between entry level and the move up. So what happens over eight years? For most people, your income goes up. And I think it's reasonable to assume that it would go up by at least $400. So hence, transition to your move up home. Well, what happened? Today, today, given that we have an effective interest rate below 4%, we now have mortgage rates at, let's call it seven and a half, Today, the payment is $1,384. Folks, that is more than 200% higher. That's 300% higher. So what you're doing now is, hey, honey, do you want a new home? You're like, what's it cost? $1,384? The answer is no. We don't want to do that. Hey, folks, looks like Beth Traverso's in the house. I think that means she's back from Italy. She did a trip with her daughter to Italy. Welcome home, Beth. I hope you had an amazing time. The, the pictures were awesome. So again, today's payment is $1,384 higher. 
if, if you are one of the homeowners with a mortgage rate below 3%, it's worse. A lateral move. Sell house A, buy house B, it's the exact same house. Your payment goes up $804. If you want to get that move up house, which generally speaking is 25% more expensive, your payment jumps $1,773. Folks, that is over 100% higher than the payment they have today. Folks, the housing market is broken. We kept rates too long, too low for too long. Lots of people refied their mortgages, as did I. We now have fixed rate debt below four as investments. Some people as homeowners have below three. This is why the housing market is broken and will be broken for years to come. We will see transactions below trend for three to five years. What is trend? Let's call it 6.2 million. We are gonna be below that number for at least five years, in my opinion. So folks, that is the broken housing market. Whoa, we got somebody calling for 10% mortgage rates. That would be that would be a doozy. I'm not sure I see 10. I think we learned that 8% eight, 8% when we had them slightly uh, was enough to squash the housing market transactions. If they go to 10, that ought to be interesting. But we shall see. Uh, next up, let's talk about Tesla and Apple. I don't know if you saw the news. We'll go to Apple first. Apple iPhone shipments down 9.6% in Q1. Yes, folks, Apple is no longer the largest shipper of um, smartphones. That goes to Samsung by a small number. Uh, but yes, uh, Apple iPhone shipments down. It's pretty, I don't know about you, but I thought this was wild. Shipments down to 55 million, and that's down 10%. That's, that's a crazy number. How about Tesla? I don't know if you guys uh, are playing in the Tesla market, but it looks like Tesla just announced a 10% cut in their workforce. Yes, folks, 10% cut. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what it means. I don't play in the Tesla market. Way too many people that are passionate either one way or the other. But yes, 10% 10, 10 just in case you don't know, Tesla as of Q4 had 140,000 employees. So we're talking about 14,000 pink slips coming at Tesla. Let's talk about the week ahead. We, uh, we have today, which is tax day, tax day, tax day. Remember to mail your taxes or get an extension. U.S. retail sales, we've already talked about that. Home Builder Confidence came out. I think it came out at 7. I did not get a chance to look at that. Housing starts come out tomorrow. Also, Folks, Jerome Powell speaks tomorrow. That's going to be must-see TV. Uh, we're going to figure out what he says. Are rates going higher? Is uh, rate cut not, you know, rates going higher? Delayed rate cut? What's going on? Wednesday, we'll get the Beige Book. The Beige Book is interesting because it breaks down the country into segments and talks about what's going on. We saw, I think, last month where many of the, in, many of the Beige Book areas were in recession or recessionary. So we shall see. Thursday, of course, we get the weekly unemployment report and we will get existing home sales. I don't know, existing home sales, I think might surprise to the upside, uh, but we shall see uh, on Thursday. And then uh, Friday, we will get one Fed speech. Folks, we have three, five, seven, 11, 12. We have at least 12 Fed speeches today. Remember folks, inflation came in hot. We have seen the 10-year note jump from, call it 4.1 to 4.5, now I think 4.6. Are they going to talk it down? Are they going to talk it up? Let's see, uh, let's see what the Fed says. Is anybody going to be like Michelle Bowman and be our second Fed president to talk about going higher? I am convinced that we need a Fed president to threaten going higher. Uh, otherwise, this thing could get out of control. So again, that's what's coming up this week. Uh, and then let's talk about Mark Cuban. Folks, Mark Cuban was asked what, uh, what his tax bill was. And I don't know if you guys remember, but Mark Cuban sold a large percentage of the Dallas Mavericks for a huge profit. Apparently, 
Mark Cuban's uh, IRS tax bill is, let me make sure I get it right, $288 million. Mark Cuban is wiring to the U.S. Treasury, a.k.a. the IRS, $288 million to pay his federal income tax this year. I don't know about you, but I would not mind having to pay $288 million. That means you probably made a billion dollars in one calendar year. Yeah, I mean, just think about that. A quarter of a billion dollars in taxes... It means you made a billion dollars in income. Now, of course, in his case, it's obviously going to be long-term capital gains, but still, wow, what the heck? I would gladly write that check. You put a million dollars in my bank, I'll cut out 288. Makes perfect sense for me. All righty, folks, let's send some more congratulations. Tina, Tina, you got your first deal a couple of months ago and you got your next deal, uh, at least I heard about it yesterday, Tina, congratulations for doing the work. You got your golden ticket and your first black card. That is amazing. Uh, you do the work, you do the work, you do the work, and we will send out these cards. If you have closed a deal and we've helped you in any way, let me know, uh, and I will gladly send you a card and give you recognition at the end of the Daily Financial News. And as always, folks, I am an easy grader. If you are house hacking and you want to be included, fine by me. If you are building an ADU and you want to be included, fine by me. I am here to recognize people who are doing the work. Folks, have an amazing day. Take care of yourself. Like, subscribe, comment. Share this video with someone in your community. And let's get to 100,000 subs. Take care. Later.